And in the last section, we climbed this mountain to find the Sun Priest Savohar, who apparently leads a faction of the Shadow Karja called the Order of Twilight. They won't move until his vision is complete to show them their new home, and he is dead. But we did harvest from that storm bird a heart, which we can give to them to give them some sort of financial standing or basis to have some semblance of a life. But they're so rigidly strict in their rejection of the Sun King of Vod as a patricide, and they're very distinctly unique interpretation of Karja dogma, religious dogma, that, I don't know, the Death of Sabohar may give them the push they need, but we'll see. But down we go. Apparently the Osram have shown up. No. There's Talland with the thugs. A generous gent. So I'll give you one more chance to make it easy on yourselves and clear out. We won't let you pass, Asaram. If you choose bloodshed, that's on your conscience. Ain't it just like the cards you to make things harder than they have to be? Okay, boys. You heard her. Get your consciences ready. Hold on now, Talland. You again? Listen, I'm all out of patience here. I clipped that Stormbird's wings. The Salvage is mine. I don't care who gets in my way. Nora Savages or Shadow Cars or flea bags. I'm taking it. So this is where Aloy can be the brash. You'll have to go through me. Or she could be smart and say, I got there first. Which actually is Osram Law. Which is what we're going to do. Well, from what I hear, the law says that whoever gets the salvage first, keeps it. Which, in this case, is me. Am I right? You took the heart? I shot that Stormbird! Me! Am I right? She's right, Buzz. Blasted love, shut up! <sighs> okay. You win. Hey, I'm doing fine. I don't need that salvage anyhow. But these... People need all the help they can get. Come on, boys. Back to chain scrape. I need a drink. I bet you do. Asshat. Aloy, again, we thank you. You're welcome. Now take this heart. Use it to buy food, clothes, shelter for your people. Maybe even land to build a new home. This is... Savohar must make these decisions. No, I'm... I'm sorry, Lakasha. Savohar isn't coming back. He's gone. I know it's hard. But your people need a leader now. Go to Chainscrape. Talk to the forge woman there, Petra. Give her the Stormbird heart. She'll look after you and your people until you can get back on your feet. Find your path. I'll do my best, Aloy. What choice do I have? Here, please accept this. It is modest, but I hope it helps in some small way. To chain scrape, then. The things that she gives us, two champions tokens, but the J Wishbone, the Squirrel Hide, those are all very useful. Those are useful if you don't have your pouch upgrades done. So it's not a small thing she gave. She actually, I mean, J Hide, or J Feathers are, those are impossibly difficult to shoot.
But now let's determine what our next step here is. We have the main quest of the embassy. The side quest is on hold. The bigger boom. So we will head back to Chain Scrape to turn this in. And then we will turn around and head for the embassy. So let's mark that quest, that side, that errand, and let's go get that done. Just like last time, we will give ourselves a nice push off the mountain. Going down. One of the interesting things about streaming this is that normally when I play on my PlayStation and it's just offline, I plug in a cable that routes the audio through my PC. But when I play on stream, I'm letting the audio be picked up by the capture card, and therefore the controller, which has a speaker in it, uh, makes the sounds for things like the shield wing and the uh, the pole caster and things like that. You can actually hear it coming from my hands, which is very weird. But if we're returning here to Chain Scrape, we will talk to Della and Boomer, give them the parts, and see the hilarity that ensues from Welcome, the relationship between these two. I know that look. You've got all the parts, haven't you? Here you go. Outstanding! I only need a few minutes to finish the prototype. I'll take the version that won't blow my arms off. Thanks. Boomer looks upset at that. Hi. So did you blow up any machines to get the parts? I did. Or any bandits? You really like explosions, huh? Here we go. With the boomsticks? Oh, you betcha. Um, is it safe? Probably. Can I have one? No! Ah. Uh... Cause we're gonna make you something even better. The boom We now have eight champion tokens. Five skill points is enough to push this to its next one. And now we only have eight more to go to finish off that tree. Everything else is done. So I believe... I'll double check the map here, but I believe our next stop is the embassy. We don't have any more side quests to pick up. There is one I'm aware of, but we're, we're not going to do it. It's where all these question marks are. We will come back when we have a much easier mode to get up there. But we are going to head for the embassy, which requires us to go to Baron Light. So we will begin that walk. The extreme edge of the Karja Sundom to the west. A 750 meter walk from here. So thanks all for hanging out with me live today. Hopefully you're enjoying what it is. I'm attempting to still keep a very chill, slow-paced run through Horizon Forbidden West, explaining things along the way, answering any questions you may have. Um, if you're watching this series on YouTube and you have questions lore-wise, uh, I am linking in each episode uh, the excellent channel Random Side Quest that is a lore master for the Horizon series as well as Patient Wolf who does some excellent let's plays of his own uh, but I'm more than happy to answer anything in, uh, that you may comment on and encourage you to hang out you know and follow here on Twitch whenever uh, if you can if you want to ask questions live I'd be more than happy to answer them be welcome out there. Or dig into the lore and find an answer together, I suppose. Because as I said in some previous episodes, the uh, the Horizon world has kind of replaced the Mass Effect world for me as the thing I'm really digging into to understand. I don't really I, I like video game lore, um, 
but I'm very select. Oh, hey pig. I'm very selective about which worlds, which universes that I tend to really dive deeply into. And these guys are Osram? No, they're Karja. You can tell by their gloves. Those are Karja patrol on patrol. Interesting. Razor, hello. Good day, sir. Uh, I don't think we really need to take these chargers down, but they're going to be a pain, so let's just... Uh, let's see if we can scoop by them. It's going well, Razor. Uh, we are approaching Baron Light, which is the, what I would say, the main settlement area of the last of what could be deemed prologue. We have uh, cleaned up most of the mess and chain scrape, and we are now getting ready to enter right. here. Last part of the Sundom before the Forbidden West. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> there is a side quest here. All right, I should find whoever's in charge here. First, I could resupply my stash. Karuf. Take a look around too. Ah, savior, <laughs> tell me, are you seeking passage into no man's land by any chance? Maybe. Why do you ask? Ah, well, to hammer it plain, there's treasure out west. Unclaimed scrap and ancient metal. And I've got a sturdy band of salvagers that knows the lay of the land. You're not afraid of the Tanakh? <laughs> Terrified. But I carry out most of my business in no man's land. A neutral territory and all that. Barren Light is our port of entry. When its doors aren't closed for an embassy... <laughs> I was hoping your arrival meant they might be opening soon. I've got a business to run, after all. I want that embassy to happen as much as you do. Believe me, I'm working on it. <laughs> Good to know. And uh, keep us in mind. If you do manage to open the way, our main camp will be just past Baron Light. We'll buy any scrap you've got on you. And if you're looking for machine parts, We've got the best in the West, guaranteed. All right. Maybe later then. Uh, if you could get those blasted gates open. <laughs> so salvage contracts are an activity that will take a while in Forbidden West. They're all over the place. And Karuf is interested in making money like most Osram. But have a look at the, just the outskirt here of Baron Light. A lot of tents, a lot of temporary things because these doors are shut. No one's allowed to enter, did you just try to kick me? No one's allowed to enter into the no man's land, which is the buffer, the neutral zone between the Karja and the Tanakh. There's Erend. Looks like he's had it. Let's go talk to Aaron. He's here, broken ribs and all. That broken ribs will do that to you. Right. <laughs> Gentlemen. Uh, that's our cue. <laughs> yes, these games are gorgeous. Edge off. Well, at the end, the world's coming. I don't be sober for it. Now, let me guess. You're in a rush, right? So whatever you need, ask away. How have things been since I... Your silent departure? <laughs> yeah, not bad. Vanguard's going strong. Helped Avad pick up the pieces after the battle with the Eclipse. And I took a month to bury Ursa in the claim. But when I got back, I got the assignment to babysit Wadis on his way to the embassy. I thought that'd be a cakewalk, so of course things went sideways. 
You got blindsided. It wasn't your fault. A couple more of these, maybe I'll believe you. So Ursa. Ursa is Aaron's sister who was thrown into the sun ring at sunfall by Jaron when he was still alive and king. And she survived and it impressed Jaron, so he allowed her to live as a slave in the palace at Sunfall. At that point, she started to form a relationship with Avad, his second son, who is now the 14th Sun King. Ursa and Avad's relationship was certainly romantic, and Avad helped Ursa escape. And Ursa was instrumental in the ability of Avad to flee Meridian, build an alliance with the Osirum, and come back and take the capital and kill his father. And in the events of Zero Dawn, Ursa is the captain of the Vanguard instead of Erend. But when you arrive to Meridian, she has supposedly been killed, but actually was taken captive by a disgruntled Osram who wants ve wanted vengeance for the Red Raids. And as you track him down, uh, you eventually find uh, Ursa alive, but dying of her wounds. And at the end, as... Aaron just indicated in the interlude between games, he took the time to go back to the claim, which is the Osram homeland and barrier. I was, um, wondering if you were able to lay Ursa to rest, like you wanted. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, just seemed the crowd to shut up to pay their respects. Half of them owed her a favor, and the other half, the other half owed her their lives. In the end, everybody drank. Has the rowdiest funeral since uh, what? Since ever. <laughs> Feels like she would have liked that. Yeah, damn straight. Damn straight. <laughs> she would have put them all under the table. What do you know about the embassy? I know not much. Only that Avad really wants it to happen. He said I'm making peace with these Tanakh. But from what I hear, they're not too big on the whole diplomacy thing. They do most of their talking with blades and arrows. So if you're heading their way, be prepared. Things might get ugly real fast. I'll keep that in mind. So Aaron is overshadowed by two women. The, uh, the life of his sister and uh, this woman who he originally had romantic interest in, but now his friend who he feels rejected by. What do you know about this place? Well, nothing good. It's where the Karja dragged all the captives they took from the Forbidden West during the Red Raids. Lucky ones became slave labor. The rest were hauled off to the Sun Ring and Meridian. For sacrifice. You got it. Tanakh made sure to wreck the place before they chased the Karja out of the West. I can't say I blame them. And now Avad's paying the Osram to rebuild it. No matter how much new stone they put up, it'll still be stained in blood. I better get going. Right, you know, I have to do complicated Aloy things. Maybe just don't disappear completely this time. No promises. I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is, if you ever do need me... I know where to find you. <laughs> Hopefully sober next time. Not done counting it. Be careful out there, Aloy. So we have another quest here, and it's an interesting quest because it ties very neatly into the the antagonist faction at the end of Zero Dawn. This this prisoner up here who is calling for our assistance. And we're gonna go talk to him. Savior. You're my last hope. Conover. She's Meridian's savior, not yours. It's just Aloy. What do you want? Please, no one will listen. But the Eclipse. They're here in the daunt. Really, Conover? Aloy's the one that defeated them. You're bothering her with this hogwash now? Some of them must have fled west after the battle at the Alight. I saw one of our sentries, Lorovic, sneaking off to meet with one. I tried to eavesdrop, but they spotted me. And then Lorovic tried to kill me. 
Hey. Fought back. It was him or me. Unfortunately, there's no hard evidence that connects Laravik to the Eclipse. And since Conover doesn't deny killing his fellow soldier, Nozar sentenced him to death. What makes you so sure Laravik was working with the Eclipse? Well, I was too far to hear everything. But I heard them both say the word Eclipse. It's not the most outlandish claim I've heard, but it's up there. Crying Eclipse is a convenient way to dodge a death sentence. If I have to die, so be it. But if we ignore this threat, others are going to die too. Tell me exactly what happened. Weeks ago, during a shift change, some trespassers slipped through the gate. By the time anyone noticed, they were halfway out the canyon. Nozar didn't see the need to give chase. Let the Tanakh take care of them, he said. Nozar's not one to be sidetracked. He tightened up the patrol schedules, reprimanded the sentries, and everyone moved on. But I couldn't stop thinking about it. None of us are careless out here. Meaning, someone left it open on purpose. And Laravik, well, he's always grumbling about officers. But on this, he was too quiet. And after the incident, he started acting... different. Jumpy. So when I spotted him sneaking out of the barracks after hours, I followed. I found him arguing with a stranger. And when Laravik mentioned the Eclipse, I, I tried getting closer, but they heard me. The stranger took off, and Laravik lunged at me with his knife. Instincts took over. Sentries heard the scuffle and found me standing over his body. Why don't you believe him? We combed the woods. Searched Laravik's bunk, searched it again, didn't find anything. Look, Conover's a good man. I don't believe he murdered Laravik in cold blood. But Nazar only listens to facts. And that fact is, Conover killed his fellow sentry. He doesn't deny it, right? No, but more eclipses are out there. And considering there's no evidence backing up this eclipse story, well, we can't question a dead man. Nozar's on edge with the upcoming embassy and doesn't want distractions. But hey, if you find a bunch of Eclipse soldiers hatching an evil plot in the woods, please do let us know. So how about we go see if there's a bunch of Eclipse soldiers hatching an evil plan out in the woods? The meeting you witnessed. Did you hear anything else about their plans? No. But the clearing where they met is just east of here, across the river. A dozen soldiers have already searched at Conover. There's nothing there. I can see things others can't. If the Eclipse are in the Daunt, I'll find them. Thank you, Caleb. Welcome Some back. You may oh, remain up, profane. Welcome back, Rocket. All right, so we're going to take this one now. And see if we can find whether or not Conover is right. And if the Eclipse is still lingering around, that's actually a pretty big deal because the Eclipse were the organization under Helis that were unearthing the Pharaoh machines in Zero Dawn under the direction of Hades. So if they're still operating, that's a problem. Thankfully, it's on this side of the gate so we should be able to do some investigation without upsetting everybody around this whole embassy thing. Hopefully you enjoyed your lunch, Rocket. Remember to clonk that follow button. Must be the clearing where Conover says he saw the eclipse. Bloodstains. It's a good place to start as any.
where you, you see bloodstains, Aloy. I don't see bloodstains. Apparently off over here are there are bloodstains. Hey, right there in the middle of the track. Apparently we're not scanning that, we're just looking at it. Pretty sure this is where Conover killed that guard. Maybe my focus can tell me if there really was a third person here. I see plenty of tracks from the car to search party. Not helpful. Branches. Was someone up here? Faint tracks leading away from barren light. I should be able to follow them with my focus. Let's see where this leads. Maybe Conover wasn't lying after all. Let's see if we can skirt around these machines here or not. Lost the trail. There's too many machines walking around. Maybe I can pick up the tracks once I'm past them. to follow the trail up ahead now. Let's get our parts though. Now let's see if we can pick up this trail we were following before we walked into this whole section up there maybe it's a valuables box Blood. a lot of it yep machine must have slashed him. Should be easy to follow the blood trail with my focus. Looks well, that like pop in was much. interesting. One of the things they still have not fixed in this game, and I am running in visuals mode, not performance mode. We're still tracking down whoever this third party was at this meeting between, well, the meeting that Conover interrupted. Bandages. Looks like the runner tried to treat their wounds before they went on. They should be able to follow their tracks. Where did you go off to? So whoever it was came down here, bandaged themselves up after they got hit by that burrower, and then continue to up the hill here. Hmm. 
And up toward what looks like a cave. The trail ends here. Must have climbed up to that cave. With that injury, I'll bet he's on his last legs. This looks like a good place for someone to hide. So they're saying, what do we do now? They're hiding in a collapsed car tunnel. We don't know Larvik's dead. He hasn't shown at the rendezvous point. So either that fool guard killed him, or he lost his nerve. We'll just have to blast our way through the gates. And then what? Rayad was our only link to Vezra, and now he's dead too. We'll track Vezra if we have to. But first we have to get past Baron Light. Next change of guard we go in fast and loud. Conover was right. I have to stop them before they hurt anyone else. We may have lost Meridian for now, but it will be ours again someday. Three thousand damage on that guy. I'm gonna take the lieutenant out right now. Sounds like there's more eclipse beyond the daunt. If this Rayad was their only link to them, he might have a focus. He could tell me where they are. All right, let's clean up the uh, the looting. There's a piece of lore back there. We'll come back and read in a moment. But Aloy's inferring that the the officers of the eclipse, just like in Zero Dawn, were uh, it had a focus network, and this lieutenant we just killed may have data on a focus should he possess one. So we're gonna go up there and have a look and see if that is true and if we can learn anything more. I'm guessing that's where he Blood trail must have been his. He bled out trying to get here. I was right. Ryad has a focus. Loyal 
Eclipse. If you're seeing this, it means you've left the Sundom in search of something to follow. Your journey is almost over. Follow the sun beyond the gates of barren light. And bask in the gloom of future conquest. A new empire awaits. Oh, I have to pay this Vezra a visit and crush his new Eclipse empire before it begins. There's coordinates here, up past barren light. Ryad's mask should be enough to prove Conover's innocence. I better take it back to Baron Light. All right, so we can get Conover out of jail now. Overdraw damage. Shellfish piece there is interesting, considering that you don't get a chance at those for quite a while in this game. All right, so we'll loot our way back out, head back to Baron Light, prove Conover's innocence, and then transition our focus to the embassy. We will read this lore piece first. Text log, Corruption Minimal, titled Darkened Sun. We are the Eclipse, elite of the Shadow Karja. We did as Hades, the buried shadow, commanded. We followed the prophecy that High Priest Bahavis foretold. We wore the relics of the Old Ones, allowing us to share whispers across the Sundom. We raised an army of ancient machines to lay siege to the traitors who had stolen our holy city of Meridian. All for naught. The that cursed Nora Huntress slew our leaders and brought the buried sh shadow low. What are the faithful to do when prophecy fails them? But perhaps it has not. Bahavis spoke of a cosmic cycle cut short by the murder of the true Sun King Jaron. The world cast in shadow, the wheel of time broken, an unending day under a darkened sun. What if this period of prophecy is not yet complete? What if the buried shadow is not a deliverer, but only a harbinger? If this is true, our mission hasn't ended, it has barely begun. And it could very well be that the West, land of the setting sun, is where true power lies. Sounds like a, a cult trying to hold itself together by reinventing its narrative, kind of like what QAnon does. Oh, our first prophecy didn't work, so we'll we'll reinvent or spin our tails so that we can still fit our reality to it. But we'll gather here from the eclipse that we slew on the way in and then make our way back to Baron Light. Get Conover out. And take things from there. We're a couple of trunks out here we could hit. take supplies. Even if you have more than you'll ever need, three metal shards here, two metal shards there, adds up. I can get it for my stash later. I think it's more that maybe they were storing things in there like the ancient box contained things that the, the uh, clips put in there and they had hidden them in the cars the repurposing of something from the old world by the shadow cars and the or by the eclipse and then they were kind of hiding resources in there maybe it's one one way to rationalize it at least but back to barren light Yeah. 
And we will take a little bit of a shortcut here, given we've walked this path now. Thankfully, colliding with a tree, a tree branch or leaves does not break the shield wing because that would be painful. So we will, is there a bridge crossing down here? I think there is. Because I am the savior. So we still have to go in the main gate. I was hoping we could cl climb over, but we're not go going to be able to. So we'll go into the main gate of what is the fortress here. And speak to Conover first, he's yes. That looks like he's had a few. Yeah, we've already had that conversation. Alive, soldier. She's back. Aloy! Did you find anything? Eclipse fugitives were camped out on the other side of the forest. And they were getting ready to fight their way through Baron Light. You just helped save a lot of lives. Aloy, you know I believe you. But Nozar? He might not be convinced by your words alone. If he needs proof, show him that. And tell him the man he's got locked up risked his life to expose and eliminate an Eclipse spy. Huh. I guess you are his savior. Congratulations, soldier. You're a free man. I'll have you out of there before sunfall. I'll make sure this gets to Nozar. That's it, then. The end of the Eclipse. <sighs> Almost. The trespassers you mentioned, the ones who got through Baron Light weeks ago, their leader is dangerous. And he's out there, in the Forbidden West, building up an army. Sun and Shadow, you're going out there to stop him, aren't you? I'm gonna try. I want to help. I can fight. I know you can. But you've been through a lot. Once you're out of that cell, you should enjoy your freedom. You've earned it. Take them out, Savior. Uh, champion tokens 10 that means we can buy a weapon before we head down here for that embassy we are going to make that decision and before I do that I need to double check one thing to make sure I pick the right weapon which requires me to bring up a document that I have because I kept track of the materials I needed in order to do upgrades the two weapons I am interested in are tears of land guard which is a hunter bow and it reaves downfall, which is the sharp shot bow. So I was right when I mentioned those earlier. Now I gotta make the decision about which one I want first. Because there is someone out here who should sell it. All the hunter merchants in the game should each sell the new legendaries, no matter where you are. Okay, so this is the purge water on there makes me want it almost immediately because there is no legendary in the base game or for that matter very good purple that is a purge water bow but then there is a reeves downfall which man also nasty nasty weapon hmm 
we're not going to run into any purge water enemies until we're farther into the game or anything that I can't really overcome. So I really think I want the upgraded sharp shot. So here we go. We're going to equip you in Regala's Wrath spot. And now we have to find a workbench. Which of course there, there we go, there's a workbench. So some of the prep I did for this, this playthrough was to ensure that I have all the resources I need. So we're going to come in here, assuming it loads up, and yes, we are ready to do the Reeves Downfall upgrade. Which means we're going to move all of our crit over to this. And done. Now to do our coils. Which means we're going to have to come out of here. Go into our weapons. We have... See, this is the other big reason. There are five coil slots in this bow as opposed to three here. We're going to lose our penetration arrows, which sucks. But... It's a, it's a trade-off I'm willing to make. So we'll edit these coils and we will unequip, unequip the three purple crit, chit, crit hit chance plus 15s. We'll come over here, edit these coils, and we will add those back in. So those should be here. Crit hit chance. All right, so we've now reaccomplished. We have a plus 25% critical hit damage chance base because of the perks on this bow. And we just added 45 to that. That's a 70% chance that we're going to crit hit when we hit with this thing. The instant explosion chance is, is meh to me. The instant shock damage is meh to me. The concentration damage and the overdraw damage are amazingly good. So we're going to see if we can bump this crit hit up anymore. There's a plus 15, which will take it from 75 to 90. We have one of those. I like 90% chance of a crit hit. That's that's really nice. None of these are very useful. The legendary coils we have. Impact damage, not really. Overdraw damage would be nice. I don't think we have another overdraw damage here. High ground damage, draw speed damage. Component, these are all in use. Drenched enemy damage, we're going to use that on a different bow. Overdraw damage, plus 15%, not in use. There we go. So this bow has tear precision arrows, advanced precision arrows, elite precision arrows. It's a very nice bow. But we will be going with those most of the time, unless we just want to rip pieces off of a off of a yeah, an enemy. It's an interesting looking bow. Very mechanical looking. Wow, you're telling me I have 2,000 meters to go to my next objective? Yeah, because it's way... So if we want to continue with the Eclipse storyline, it's way into the No Man's Land. We have a quest here. Let's go pick that up real quick. Where is that side quest? It's well outside Baron Light, actually. Let's go have a look. Did I mark it? I did mark it. Why am I not seeing the marker on my screen? No matter. We have the marker right there. We'll go find out what this is and then come back and deal with this embassy. We have our first NG Plus legendary. 
which is exciting. Carja soldier here. Hey, what happened here? What do, what do you care? Don't you? As it happens, no. You know, I was already having a crappy day, and now these, these two idiots picked my shift to climb the damn mountain. Wouldn't be so bad if this one weren't so heavy. Wait, two idiots? Did I stutter? Yeah, two. I heard another one shouting up top. Sounds like they got caught between sharp claws and a sharper fall. Someone's in trouble. Uh, aren't you gonna do something? <laughs> Self-inflicted. And I got my hands full with this one. You're seriously not going to help. You seriously are? <sighs> Someone's in trouble at the top of the... So we'll at least get this one ticked. I better get to climbing. But we're not going to complete it until much later. A lot of people complained. Well, some people. It's not saying a lot, like there was a majority or anything or a poll done, but some people complained they did not like the idea that you had to scan with your focus in order to understand where the climbing trail was. And I actually think that's really very innovative. That Aloy uses the augmented reality device in order to determine where she should use or which pieces, which parts of the, the cliff face she should use as handholds. Because she free climbs everywhere. I guess people were wanting more what Gilly had mentioned earlier in the, this day of recording where there was a desire to have more of a Breath of the Wild climb anything, and I think that that would be a disservice to this game. Alright, what's going on over here? There's some fire gleam up here. And there is a machine over there. How do we get to that fire gleam? By climbing over here. Get away from me, you bucket of balls. We'll be there in a moment. That is very much a thing I hope they get rid of in Breath of the Wild, but I'm sure they won't. The new Breath of the Wild is the stamina to climb. I do hope one of, that would be the lesser thing that I care about. The other thing in the new Breath of the Wild that must go away, or must have some answer, is the weapon durability. If they if they ignore how, I wouldn't say universally, but how heavily disliked that was, then they're not paying attention to their players. He stood down the moment I fired. Okay, we need to go to the other bow, because that's too far away. I can get through that override machine. They always stand up, and that centerpiece in the burrower's chest is a crit hit. Or it's a weak spot for them. Of course, this dude's standing up behind rocks, and I can't see him. I did get them all. I'm in. 
So she's over there. We're going to talk to her in just a moment, but we want to clear this tower first. I am really busting up this place. Well, if they'd left the ladder on the outside, we wouldn't have to, would we, Aloy? This is where it's a little hitchy. It's like, hello, I would like to just stand up here. Thank you. Okay, that's the rappel down. That's how we got up here. Maybe it's out the other side of the door here. Oh, hello! Shoot. I thought she would just jump, and let's not go back down there. Great, now we're on the wrong side of everything. Hey, we, we did that on purpose. We came over here for this chest, you know. I can't climb this. We're gonna have to walk back around. That's the rappel all the way down. That's not what we want to do. So we do it again. I will in a moment. Just kind of walked through those rocks there. Such an interesting way to climb. To throw your body feet first like that. There we are. We were like one step away. How annoying is that? And there's another one of those devices. The lens. I guess I'll figure out what to do with it later. We're gonna figure out what to do with them right now. Are you hurt? Oh, I live. My so-called bodyguard. You see him on your way up? It was uh, hard to miss him. He's dead. Oh. Guess that's what I get for believing in the first chuff in the tavern who said he was a, a mountain climbing machine hunter. Oh, at least I don't have to pay him now. What are you doing up here? That used to be a signal tower. The mechanism uses a special lens, which in some very specific circles is highly valuable. And since the Karja are planning on tearing them down, I was going to liberate the lens before it got destroyed. You get it for me, and the lenses from the other towers. I'll make it very worth your while. So, you're a thief. I'm more what you'd call an opportunist with a good eye for business. Look, the Karja are gonna tear all these towers down anyway. They see no value here. They're trying to make nice with the Tanakh now. See? It's a victimless crime. A uh, opportunity. Tell that to your friend down there. <sighs> Self-inflicted. You said that was a signal tower. In its day, it was a sight to see. All six of them all lit up all around the daunt. They used to warn folks that the Tanakhs are coming, for whatever that was worth. As you can imagine, the car just spared no expense putting them together. Hence the fancy lenses in need of a new home before the towers are torn down. I already found some, actually. Well, I'll be tarnished. Before I got hurt, I was gonna climb that tower there to get this. You already beat me to it. This should be a nice reward for your efforts. I'm an honest merchant after all. Mm. Thank you. Aloy. Reyna. Well, Aloy, 
As soon as I'm up for it, I'll be going back to Baron Light to rest this ankle. So, if you find any more of them lenses, you know where to find me. I'll see what I can do. Alright, so the other signal towers have these lenses. And it's a collectible, and it's easy to do just in the dawn, but I've done it already. So I'm not too heavily focused on getting that done. Nor does it have much plot value apart from the fact that Reyna wants these lenses for a reason. A reason beyond she's a thief. So we're going to coast back down to Baron Light here before we bring this episode to a close and on the live side of things take a break, walk around and whatnot, and then we will force the embassy forward to its major plot point in the next episode. So if you're on YouTube and you're having fun, give us a like, maybe subscribe to the YouTube channel on and join us live sometime on the Twitch side. For those of you watching with me live and just enjoying the chill stream today. We'll be back in just a few moments. Make sure you stand up, walk around, etc. And um, I'll talk to you in just a few.